doing today? It's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video. And so for this video, I want to talk about three morphs that I feel that you need to have in your collection if you plan on breeding hog nose snakes. So the first morph I want to talk about is the anaconda gene. So this gene was found by Brent Bumgardner and it's an incomplete dominant gene. So that means that it actually has a super form. So what the anaconda gene does is it reduces the pattern. So when the animal has one copy of it, it reduces the pattern compared to the normal wild type hog nose snake. And when it has two copies of the anaconda gene, which is called a super conda, other than the head of the snake, the rest of the body is completely patternless. Now there are some exceptions to the rules, such as when you combine a super arctic to super conda, as well as if you combine extreme reds and some extreme red albinos to super conda. Some of those animals will actually have a stripe going down its back, but for the most part, it's gonna be completely patternless. And the reason why I added this gene on this list is because it just gives you more variety in your collection. So for example, if you combine an anaconda and you breed that to another anaconda, in that clutch, you have a possibility of producing some anacondas, some normals, as well as supercondas. So you can see you have more variety in your clutch. And then when you combine that with other recessive genes or the other incomplete dominant genes, the, the amount of variety in your clutch can be pretty significant. So the next morph I want to talk about is the Arctic gene. So this was discovered by Jeff Galewood, and it is another incomplete dominant gene. And some of the key characteristics of it is that it lightens the background while at the same time making those saddles pop because the saddles are usually outlined in black or melanin. And then when you have the super version of the Arctic, which is also known as a super Arctic, it just magnifies everything. So it lightens the background even more. And that black pigment that was once around the edges of the saddles starts to concentrate in the saddles. And so usually you will get almost a black and white animal. Sometimes they have brown in the saddles as well. And then when you combine the super Arctic with other recessive genes, that actually changes the color of some of the animals. Like you see, with the albino, the super arctic for whatever reason, basically masks the red and orange pigments and kind of give these snakes a pink pigment. And also you do have some super arctics um, have translucent scales along their bellies. So the super arctic gene is probably the most unique gene out of uh, any of them in the hog nose snakes. And just like the, the anaconda, it adds variety. So if you breed an arctic to an arctic, you have a chance in one clutch to have normals, arctics, and super arctics. All right, so the last gene I wanna talk about is the sable gene. So this is a recessive gene discovered by Dan Eby, and it's basically a, a melanistic gene. So it makes the hog nose darker. And the reason why I chose to put this gene on a list is because I think it's the most important recessive gene that we know of. And the reason being is because I feel that it is an enhancer gene. So whenever you combine sable to another recessive gene, I think it just, the sable just makes that animal look way better, especially compared to other recessive combinations. So for example, if we look at albino, when you combine a sable and albino, you produce a sunburst, which is this like vibrantly orange color hog nose. I think that looks better than any other albino combination in terms of other uh, recessive genes. So whether you combine albino with exanthic and you get a snow or albino with toffee and get a toffee glow or albino with lavender and get a coral, I think the sunburst looks better than all of those. And then I just can, you can kind of go down the list. You can look at exanthic. I think the storm cloud, which is a blue hog nose snake, when you combine exanthic with sable, I think that looks better than toxics. I think it looks better than snows and then on and on and on. I feel that when you combine sable with another recessive gene, it just blows everything out the way. And then you look at things such as like when you combine sable with pink pastel and you get the galaxies, you get the oxides, when you combine it with hypo, you get the the, the toasted caramels, we combine them with caramel. Like these animals are just second to none when you compare that to other recessive genes. So I feel that sable has to be on this list and it's definitely my favorite recessive gene. So that's my list right there. Y'all let me know in the comment section, do y'all agree with it? What other genes do you think should be must haves if you 
plan on getting into hognose snakes. And I appreciate y'all for watching the video. If you like the channel, subscribe, like, comment, do all that good stuff, and I'll see y'all for the next video. Peace out. And if you're interested in learning more about hognose morphs, feel free to buy one of Kevin Rhodes' books using the discount code 2022. The link will be in the description to the store where you can find them.